Originally, we wanted to make an action video. However, we decided that it would be impractical with the amount of moving camera and all of the different moving objects. Tracking, uh, rotor brushing, and all of that would have been, well, incredibly time consuming. So we chose to make something a bit more subtle. In this case, the video is about a character staying up late to watch a meteor shower. One meteor has crashed nearby him, and he actually ends up catching one. After becoming one with the meteor, strange things start to happen around him. Because none of us used alpha effects uh, before, we felt that we needed to do some test shots to see whether what we wanted to do for our assignment was possible. So using YouTube tutorials and video copilot, it helped us learn the basics quickly. We saw on video copilot a making of short where they spray painted a sphere green and replaced it in after effects. We used a green stress ball, chroma keyed it out, and overlaying a test version of an orb, created uh, which gave us enough practice to go out and find a bigger ball, spray paint that green, and do the same for our actual film. In our final video, color correction played a huge role in our creation of our day for night shots and our green screen editing. Early on in the project, we decided that a number of our shots would take place at night. However, night shots are incredibly expensive and usually don't yield great results. To solve this, in movies and broadcasting, day for night shots are typically used. In order to create a realistic night shot, the light of the moon is recreated by tinting the video blue. However, for the sake of clarity, typically more blue is added than needed. For the sake of realism, we decided to use as little blue as possible in our color corrections while maintaining as much detail as possible. To improve the scene in which flowers grow in the future, it would be worth considering the lighting within 3ds Max prior to exporting. Using colour correction to improve blending was difficult due to the shine of the leaves. Also for scenes with sky replacement, shooting the footage on a day where the sky is extremely bright would be a benefit. Clipping colours from a predominantly grey background caused masses of difficulty, meaning that the task was far more time consuming than it should be. We chose to green screen several of our shots so that we could experiment further with techniques. However, while filming our shots, we did not take into account the drastic difference in lighting between the green screen room and the backgrounds we intended to use. The lighting was top-down and very bright, created deep shadows and bright spots on the subject. What we should have done is arrange a three-point setup, placing a key light at a 45-degree angle to the left of the camera to match the direction of light from our set, then place a fill light to the right of the camera at a 45-degree angle with a lower wattage bulb to fill the shadows on the subject. And lastly, place a background light, also with a lower wattage bulb, directly behind the subject, being careful not to let the light hit the lens. This background light helps to prevent flatness in the final composite. Tracking also played an important role in our video, because one of the main subjects we would be filming, an orb held by the actor, would need to be tracked for editing purposes. The native After Effects motion tractor can be used effectively as long as the lighting within the scene does not change and the camera position does not move throughout the shot. Because our scene matched these criteria, we chose to forego using Mocha and instead track the orb by hand using the After Effects tracker. Rotobrush also played an important role in our tracking. This was incredibly useful for our set extensions and sky replacements. Thanks to the foggy conditions of our filming, we were able to Rotobrush out most of the scenes without any corrections at all. Had it not been for Rotobrush's introduction in CS5, we would have had to go through 200 frames, one by one, rather than complete the work in seconds. Plugins also played an important role in our work, making our lives simpler and our editing more efficient. Nearly every shot we did included at least one CC effect, and without it, nearly all of our work would have been vastly more complicated, if not impossible to complete. If CC effects simplifies After Effects, Trap code is the other extreme, supercharging effects. Particulate was used in a variety of scenes. It was particularly useful for creating meteors in the starting scene. It is an extremely useful, user-friendly plugin and created realistic-looking shots where possible rather quickly. Where we failed and why. Green screening is typically used for cost efficiency when a digital composite is cheaper than an actual set. Our mistake here was green screening for the sake of green screening. It would have been easier to film these shots on set rather than green screen. Choosing to do this and also not correcting the lighting in the green screening room to make it more efficient for editing caused us a great deal of trouble because we could not correct all of the light differences in the final composite. In theory, if we had done this more professionally, the final shot would have turned out more like Peregrine took in The Lord of the Rings. Where we succeeded. While doing the sky replacements and the day for night shots, 
We faced a great deal of difficulty with the sky replacements clipping off pieces of the tree, and the day-for-night shots having issues with contrast. After a lot of time spent on this, we were able to succeed quite well, 